All right, what's up everybody? We're back on the Tahoe 100,000 mile service. Today's mission, we're gonna do the rear differential service, which is just a glorified uh, fluid change. However, we're also gonna address another problem with this Tahoe. Let's take a look. I showed you guys this cover. I mean, this thing is just rusted to oblivion. I'm also gonna do the cover change. I think what I'm gonna end up doing is just getting this uh, rear sway bar out of the way. So to pull this sway bar out of the way, I'm just gonna take out the bolts. But before I do that, I'm going to take the best thing ever invented since PV Blaster. Let's kind of get them things uh, soaked down a little bit. I don't know if any of you guys ever heard of this crap right here, this aero coil. But this has been the best stuff I've ever used. Now let's just say you just got your Tahoe and all you wanted to do is just check the fluid level. You've got your check and fill plug right here. It's just got a 3 8 square drive in it. You put your ratchet up in that mug. Set him out of the way. Got a white zip tie. We'll just go like that. He's empty. We'll go like that. We got a little bit of fluid. Like everything else, the bottom of this plug is the fill level. Like I said, I want to swing this sway bar out of the way. So I got a 13 millimeter socket on my ratchet. We're just gonna go around, pull these out. On the top one, I just kind of loosened them. I didn't take him all the way out. What I try to do, just take a little scraper, just kind of tap him up there to break the seal. And see by keeping that top bolt up in there, we can kind of control the drainage. Just trying not to make a big ass mess, you know what I mean? Somebody might cry. Not too bad, right? This top bolt is a little bit stubborn. Now, in the spirit of do-it-yourself where you don't have tools or none of that shit, honestly, a razor blade is like the best way to clean this crap off. The only bitch is it's time consuming. Whoa. Sorry. Kind of get him off of there. So you can see even where, even though we took a big chunk off of there, there was still some little stragglers hanging on. Now in a shop environment, you really don't have the time to go over that shit with a razor blade. So what I'd use is one of these little plastic grinding discs. Uh, these things are great because they don't really dig in and scar up the surface, you know what I mean? Now if you are going to use your little grinder here, don't be a pussy. Wear fucking safety glasses. Now say you want to check your progress, I spray brake clean in a rag and then just kind of wipe, you know what I mean? I don't like spraying brake clean up into the uh, differential itself. You can kind of see if you missed any spots, you know what I mean? Yeah. 
And on this, you know, I'm not I'm not going for perfection, but I want to get all of the old gasket material off of it. You know what I mean? Since I used my air whizzer, I do got some debris just chilling in here. I'm just gonna blow that out. Now another thing I want to mention, you can see like here on this lip right here, it's still discolored and dirty, but that's not gasket material. This is just crud. The gasket doesn't fully go all the way down here. So getting this to be perfectly clean, like on a how-to I saw, this isn't necessary. That's, in my opinion, just either OCD or, well, I guess it is just OCD, but my, my big thing is just to make sure that this, you know, imaginary line across here and up is, is clean. Now, if I was just going to do a fluid change, I'd go ahead and do the same thing with this. Scrape all the old shit up off of here, clean this magnet out, clean this cover out, and uh, put it back together. So, got the new one and the old one next to each other. Here's the magnet in the old one. And I kind of do want to use him in the new one. They put this magnet in here for a reason. So you can just take a rag and kind of wipe the shit off of it. This this one's actually a little bit bendyable. It's weird. Break clean the fuck out of him. He was like down in here somewhere. I don't really like the fact that it can move around on that pan. You know, but then again, it could move around on the other one. The original one. So, when you're looking at it, the cover's gonna sit up like this. So, he's down at the bottom. We kind of don't want this gasket moving around when we're trying to finagle this up there. So, we could use some uh, black weather strip adhesive, but because we've got enough room to work and we can kind of see what's going on, I'm not gonna use it for this. If I was in the driveway and kind of maneuvering this thing around underneath, crawling around and shit like that, I might tack it down, but I think we're going to be okay without it. So before I put that cover back on, I like to get set up with Mr. Ratchet and just two of the cover bolts. Just have them ready. That way, once I get them on there and situate it, the reason I do two is that way the gasket won't move. I just got two bolts up in there. That kind of holds the gasket in place. Maneuver this guy up and over. You know, this ratchet seems a little bit excessive for what we're doing, so it's time we turn it down a notch. So I'm not going to go crazy tightening them down. I'm just going to get them kind of snug right now, and then on our last pass, we'll, uh, we'll get them down pretty good. Now, I don't know what the torque spec is for these bolts. I don't really follow the torque spec anyway. I just kind of uh, snug it down. Just, I'm, dude, I'm talking like just a little, just a little, uh, you know what I mean? Nothing crazy. Uh, uh. The problem I have with doing these sometimes is just forgetting to snug one down all the way. So I'll go back and just do another pass and just make sure I got them all. Now, I just want to show you guys something. So there's actually a bracket right here that gets bolted to the cover. And that's kind of why they had that little cutout right there, you know, where this raised lip is. It's cut out. And this is just a, a holder for this brake line. Well, I don't know what the torque spec is on these bolts. I'm not gonna file it. Just gonna give them a little uh. And as you can see, I kind of stepped down from the half inch uh, ratchet because uh, things might break. So just snug him up a little bit. Mm, uh, and do this other side too. So this bracket, you can kind of see, all it does is just clip over this uh, support right here. And then it also clips into this line. 
Just keeps him out of trouble. Got a bottle of the Amsoil 7590 just chilling right there. I've got one end of my transfer pump into the 7590 and the other end of the transfer pump goes straight up into the check fill plug. We can just go ahead, take our check fill plug. Get him back up in there. Clean him off a little bit. Snow blower. One of the things that I did not anticipate when I did this was that the little gasket and this old diff cover actually broke apart upon removal. And again, this is at like 111 or 112,000 miles. So we have to incorporate the cost of a differential cover gasket into this. And the price of that can vary. Yeah, you might get it for like three bucks on Rock Auto, but you're going to pay, you know, eight, nine dollars in shipping. You can get it locally for seven, eight bucks, something like that. So I, I just think that we should just use a rough number at 10 bucks for the gasket to be included in this service. So for the rear diff service, we had 11.55 times three for three quarts of gear oil. That brought us to 34.65. One thing that I kind of didn't explain very well when we did the plus 10 plus 10 was plus 10 was for the shipping and the other plus 10 was for joining as a preferred customer. So just to make that part clear. So we still have to add on this 10 bucks for the shipping. Brings us to 44.65. And then we're going to also add another 10 bucks for a cover gasket. And again, that price may vary. Now the argument can also be made that you don't need to use a gasket. You can use some uh, RTV silicone. The gray stuff works the best in my opinion. Your results may vary. Right now we're at $54.65. So again, this incorporates the $10 because we had to join Amsoil and all that stuff and then another $10 for the gasket. So $54.65 was the total for today. Once again, just like with the front diff, the transfer pump was included in the cost of the transfer case service. So we're not including that in this because we got it and we were able to do all of the diffs with just one pump. So that's pretty cool. Just give me a second here, because somewhere along the line, I think I fucked up our total. So our grand total as of right now is 286.09 for our 100,000 mile service. Going over the list right here, you can see we've got one thing left, which is the transmission service. I've been putting this off for the last thing because it's going to suck. Now I've been putting off the transmission service videos for my Trailblazer and for the Tahoe for a while because my idea was to build a ghetto trans flush machine. This would be some way to get all the old transmission fluid out. And we're not talking about just getting five quarts out by doing a traditional pan drop and, and filter change. We're talking about pumping all the old stuff out and all the new stuff in. It's a super big capacity, somewhere around 14 quarts. And using the deck six or its synthetic equivalent can get kind of pricey. So I've been, I've been putting this off till last, but in between then and now, what had happened was my buddy Malik stopped up here with his Envoy. We followed a procedure for doing a flush on the 4L60s in the Trailblazer, and it actually worked pretty damn good. We actually got close to like 16 quarts of nastiness out of his Envoy with high mileage on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to incorporate that same thing into the, the trans service on my Tahoe. I'm sorry, on my wife's Tahoe. So fucking sorry. So the whole service will include the filter change and a complete fluid swap. So we're talking 16 quarts of transmission fluid, a filter and a gasket, you know, for the, for the pan, you know what I mean? And that's going to put the price up high, but well, you got to do it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to do it. You know what I mean? The other thing about this Tahoe here is it's got a transmission cooler line has a slight leak in it. That's something I'm going to kind of consolidate because it's like, well, while I'm there doing all this transmission service, it's going to be best just to replace these cooler lines at the same time. So that's pretty much it for part seven, I believe, of the 2004 Chevy Tahoe 100,000 mile service. We've done a lot of shit. We're still under 300 bucks. We're saving a ton of money, you know what I mean? So anyway, that wraps it up. 
Thanks for watching. You like what you see, subscribe. If you don't like it, well, beat it. I don't want you watching my shit anyway. <laughs> Just kidding. Please subscribe. Please subscribe to my shit. Please. I'll do anything. I'll make you fast and easy video. I won't do that. I'd like to take this time to say congratulations to a certain someone on their special day. You know what I mean? I know I didn't have to do anything, but I, I did get you a little something. Fuck you! <laughs> Go fuck yourself. Yo, what's up? Welcome to Intermission Part 2. You know, 1995 had some crazy moments in the history of, well, the universe, I guess. In 1995, the motherfuckers blew up the Oklahoma City building. We saw the release of the Unabomber's Manifesto, which I think that's what led to him getting caught. Uh, we saw the O.J. Simpson trial and him being found not guilty, even though he pretty much did it. But 1995, though, to me, has a significant meaning because 20 years ago, was the first time I opened up a hood of a car. If it's like, oh, that shit was like two months ago. No, that was 20 fucking years ago. And, and to me, that's just, it's just fucking mind blowing, you know, from where I'm sitting now and looking back, because if you would have told me 20 years ago what would happen over the next 20 years, I would have said, you're fucking full of shit. In the summer of 1995, got out of school. I was working a little job uh, at a department store, believe it or not, and my boy got a job at a popular oil change place. I'm not going to say who it was. It doesn't really matter. And he had told me, he said, man, you got to come and work up at this place, man. It's pretty laid back, good hours, good pay. Uh, for being 18, it was good pay. You know what I mean? And the best part about that was you didn't have to have any experience. Now, if you've ever brought your car to one of them oil change places, you know what I mean? You got the guy that might vacuum out your car and, and wash the window and put air in your tires and shit. That was me. That's where I started out at. You know what I mean? And for me, it was a way to get into something different. And like I said, something that had better hours and better pay than, than what I was doing. One thing I noticed right away from working there was time kind of flew by. I know that like it sounds crazy or whatever, but it was just like, damn, it's time to go home already. You know? doing stuff, no matter what it was, fucking around with cars, it, it, it almost put me in like a time warp, which is good because I don't fucking feel like doing something for eight hours, you know what I'm saying? So I started working at this place, and like I said, I didn't know nothing, pretty much entry level, and when things kind of got busy, you know, the, the manager would say, hey man, you know, if it comes up where we need you to do this, this is what you do, you know what I'm saying? And that got me more into doing stuff under the hood of a car, which I pretty much had never done before. And from there, it kind of escalated to, well, this guy seems to have his head on straight. Go down underneath the cars, you know what I'm saying? So within like two months, I went from not knowing anything to being, you know, the, the versatile guy, the guy that can work underneath the car, under the hood, or just do the, you know, the easy stuff more or less, you know what I mean? So after a couple weeks there or whatever, just out of the blue, I just decided to change the oil on my own car. So I bought some ramps, I took some tools home from the shop, you know, filled a wrench, wrenches, stuff like that, you know what I mean? And I actually changed the oil on my own car, just did it myself. Which kind of proved to me, even at 18 years old, that, you know, with the right guidance, you know, I could do shit that I never would have thought I was capable of, you know what I'm saying? From there, I got like pretty much, I guess you'd call it a, an apprenticeship at a dealership. Did that for a couple years, and when I went there, it was, look, ma'am, you do good here for six months. We're going to get you your factory training. We're going to get you on the line with these other guys, you know what I mean? And that strung along for years, you know what I'm saying? Eventually got to the point where I was just like, you know what? There's got to be a change. I came in this motherfucker to go to school and get the training that I need to work on today's vehicles, and these motherfuckers just ain't doing it, you know what I mean? After there, I went to a, a franchise. You know what I'm saying? Which is like one of these stores that, you know, they might have like, you know, a thousand locations across the country. You know what I mean? A franchise. You know what I mean? That shit sucked big balls. Got into another dealership, worked there for about seven years, got more training there than 
pretty much I had in my whole previous, at the time, eight years, you know what I'm saying? And it was awesome. I mean, I went to school for everything from building differentials to building motors to um, my favorite thing in the world, which was the electronics, uh, to the point where I actually became um, master certified in electronics for this particular manufacturer. You know, I would planned on staying there for like my whole life. Unfortunately, the recession of 2007-2008 suggested otherwise. There's also a fly on my camera, it looks like. Fuck you, fly. Get off my shit. I didn't hit him. After I left that dealership, you know what I mean, I went and worked for some clown for a little while. Things just didn't work out there, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he didn't understand the, the definition of efficiency. You know, efficiency is, is a big thing in auto repair, and unfortunately that dude didn't get it, you know what I mean? His idea of being efficient was to run out to the parking lot and you know squeal the tires of the car and fly in the shop you know it's just just ass clown you know what I'm saying my arguments always been it's funny that you know I can go from a place making 17 18 hours in an eight hour day to you know getting my balls broke because I'm taking too long doing something well a lot of that has to do with efficiency you know what I mean if, if you're set up to be efficient you can do things faster than what they pay. One of my personal favorite accomplishments about what I did at the dealership was, you know, I was turning times comparable to guys that had been doing it 20 some years and I didn't have to resort to selling snake oil, fuel injector flushes, or we got to flush your brake fluid or any of that crap that just is all fucking bullshit. You know, I was able to do it with just get it in, get it fixed, get it the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? Even where I'm at now, Get it in, get it fixed, get it the fuck out. You know what I'm saying? I always thought that having my own building would be fucking awesome. You know, and, and that's the way to get paid and that's the way to do it. But unfortunately it's not because today's day and age, it's just, it's, it's tough. It really is tough. I mean, you've got assholes that see stuff on the internet and then come and tell you how you should be doing your job. I tell them to go fuck themselves. I just had one yesterday where they said, no, it's not that hard. We saw somebody do it on YouTube. You know, and I, I told him, I said, you, do you understand that these people make these deceptive videos to, to make it look easier than it is? And what their definition of easy is might not be the same as you? Uh, dealing with fucking just broke-ass motherfuckers in general, um, people that try to skate around a diagnostic charge and then they don't want to pay when, they're, when their guess apart doesn't fix it, you know what I'm saying? It's just a lot of bullshit. I'm at the point where I'm, you know, coming up on a year being here, and based on what I've seen so far, I'm not sure if this is even what I want to do now. You know what I mean? Really, what I'm thinking about doing is just renting this shop out just for me and my projects, telling everybody else to go fuck themselves, and just doing something else in life. You know what I mean? Yeah, 20 years, man. That's just, that's just fucking crazy. You know what I'm saying? 20 years ago. And, you know, the more I think about it and, and, and think about things over the years, and not only, you know, how the cars have changed, but how I've changed, it's just, it's just amazing, you know what I'm saying? And I guess the whole point of me saying this is just to say to, you know, any of you young guys out there, you know what I mean, that there was a point in my life, my life, that I didn't know anything about cars. I had never opened up a hood of a car. And now, I'm basically on top of my game, you know what I mean? I thought it would be cool to kind of share where I've come from and stuff like that, because it's something I've never really talked about before, I don't think. Maybe I did. I don't know. I don't really think I did. I never really told anybody how I started out. A lot of people, you know, the first thing they say is, well, where'd you go to school? I, dealership trained me. They sent me to school like a thousand times. You know what I'm saying? I am reading off some notes here. Last time I did this, I didn't really read off a notepad. I just kind of went off what was on my mind. Um, that video, like a lot of other things, people don't agree with the commentary at the end. They feel compelled to write me an email telling me I suck and all that stuff. Uh, one fucking fraud definitely fucked up. Basically left his screen name that he used on a popular online community and uh, I found out who it was and now I know where a lot of the flack that I've been getting has been coming from. Most of it's not actually coming from fanboys of these fucking assholes on YouTube that I hate, you know what I'm saying? It's actually coming from, instead of just picking out one or two of you frauds who have been sending me emails and all this stuff, I guess I'm gonna clump everybody together before I go too crazy, you know what I'm saying? There's a good bunch of people in there that actually know their shit, you know what I'm saying? I mean, some of these fucking 16 year olds with their blinker fluid cliches and their 710 caps, that shit's been like older than I've been doing this, which is 20 years. Sadly, my own wheel bearing 
It's a fucking wheel bearing. It doesn't last forever, and it doesn't matter who owns the fucking car. At some point, the wheel bearing is going to go bad. There's no, sadly, my own wheel bearing. Oh, sorry to be such a disappointment to the community because I didn't notice my wheel bearing fell apart. Get the fuck out of here, you know what I mean? The fact that some of these fucking assholes are actually giving car advice, you guys are fucking jokes, you know what I'm saying? Like two or three nights ago, I watched this fucking argument about fuel injector cleaner, you know what I'm saying? Now, these guys are arguing with professional mechanics that fuel injector cleaner actually does something, you know what I'm saying? You've got other, not me, I wasn't part of this conversation, but you've got other people that are in the know saying, I can't believe people still fall for that snake oil. And then you got these 16 year old fucking douches saying, no, that stuff's really good. I saw it on a video on YouTube. That stuff really works. You see this? This fucking fuel injector right here? Your fuel injector flush didn't clean it. Seafoam didn't clean it. You know what the fix was? A new fucking fuel injector. This one intermittently had low flow. That's not good enough? Do you see this fucking fuel injector? It's the same fucking thing. You know what I'm saying? That shit's garbage. I did a video. Seafoam sucks big fucking dick. And I was advised not to post it up. I had a problematic truck. You guys might have seen that in the last video. Fucking fly. On that S10 from hell. You know what I mean? It basically took doing the injector balance test got 20, 30 fucking times to catch it. Because I'm not going to go and spend three hours pulling an intake off and just guessing and swapping injectors around. I mean, my time's very valuable. I'd rather spend more time on the front side trying to catch it and then say, hey, look, I'm dropping 12 pounds consistently. One time I dropped to six. 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, drop to nine. You know, and that's what it took to actually catch this truck in the act. Then when I had my evidence, I had enough evidence to say, hey, look, guys, I think we have a fuel injector problem here. Let's try some of this fucking crap foam, you know what I'm saying? Poured the crap foam in the gas, poured it in the fucking brake booster, you know what I mean? Let the smoke show roll, and the truck still had an intermittent misfire. It did not fix it. The actual fix was replacing the fuel injector. People can interpret the testing differently because, you know, you can edit stuff to make stuff appear what it's not. I just didn't think it'd be fair to shatter the hearts of thousands of pussies on <laughs> by saying that their magic, you know, snake oil doesn't work. It'd be better off just, I know it doesn't work. If you guys don't agree with it, that's cool. That's on you. Except for you guys don't go fuck yourselves. It's just pretty good now to know where all these fucking haters are coming from. You know what I mean? Because now when somebody sends a fucking email, I know where I can probably find their username at and probably find some of the retarded posts that they've done. You know, like, sadly, my own brake pads. Brake pads wear out, you fucking asshole. It could have happened to anybody. Then you get these fucking guys there that... They want to be the fucking hero. They want to like, you know, give you, you know, strong mechanic advice. PSA. Double check your lug nuts. Like a picture of a tire off a fucking car on the side of the road or something. Okay. Thanks for the heads up. So like I said, you can see that the ratings are turned off because I nor nobody else gives a fuck what you think. You know what I mean? Um, YouTube says you can't turn off ratings. You can't turn off comments. You're going to alienate your audience. I'm not trying to be friends with the fucking audience. Here's how I fix the car. Follow it or don't follow it. I don't give a fuck. You know what I mean? If you're feeling it, subscribe. That's it. That's it. You know, these are the same fucking pussies that were like, Oh yeah, Task Force isn't better than Matco. You don't know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, well, my Matco quarter inch ratchet would break consistently. It was on, it was getting repaired more than I was actually using it, and my task force, like, lasted in a real shop environment, not like the one you guys pretend you're in, a real shop environment for like two, three years of hard daily use. Don't tell me I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. You know what I'm saying? I've been under the hood since before you've been born. Oh, one more thing too. Apparently I'm bitter because I don't like these Richie Cunningham videos, you know what I mean, like you guys have seen me say before. I watch the same videos that you guys do when I have a problem, you know what I mean? That's no fucking exaggeration. If you don't believe it, you can go through my liked playlist. You're going to see videos here and there that I've liked that have actually helped me out. The last thing I could think of was um, the dude that um, showed you how to um, program a old GM radio. I think the Theflock 1. That's the one where you can't use the scan tool to do it. Like the newer ones, you actually have to you know, enter a numerical sequence to get a code off of the radio and then call the 800 number. 
the thing worked like a charm, save my ass something big because I'm like, I got a tech too, I could program it. Couldn't do it on this one, you know what I'm saying? Had to go to YouTube, use the video, boom. And I gave the guy a like. So it's not that I'm some bitter fucking asshole that doesn't like anything on YouTube. I like the shit that helps me, you know what I'm saying? So anyway, that pretty much wraps it up for intermission part two, you know what I mean? As far as intermission part three, I don't know what we're going to do with that. I don't even know if there is going to be one. Like I said, it was intermission part one. I kind of wanted to get you guys up to speed while you guys haven't been seeing any content. Like I said, I never imagined that my shop would be as crazy busy as it is. You made it this far? Burgers and fries, motherfucker. Thanks for watching.